welcome back to Mechanical Pros. Today we're going to shoot a video on how to check your superheat and subcooling on a unit that we have operating here at the office. So I'm going to go through those steps real quick. So I'm all connected up now and I'm ready to go. I'm dealing with 410A refrigerant and I verified that by looking at the manufacturer's data tag on the unit. You must know what type of refrigerant you're, used, you're going to be working with. In this demonstration, as I talked about earlier, we'll be using an analog set of compound gauges here. There's three different refrigerants I can measure on these gauges. Again, I'm using 410A. I've got my temperature probe right now strapped to my suction pipe underneath the insulation so I get a good reading because we're going to check superheat first. Now the next thing we want to do, obviously I've killed the power so I can connect all these stuff. I should have opened up with that. You do not want to be opening this panel on any AC unit before you shut the power off. You don't know what's behind that panel, how close the panel may be to line voltage. You got your fan pulling against that panel so it's restricted when you pull it off. If you don't have your power turned off and that panel were to slip out of your hand, hits that line voltage, it's going to be a bad day. It's going to be a really bad day. So safety first. Always make sure you have disconnected line voltage power going to any unit before you ever open the panel on it. So we've gone through those steps. We're connected. Now we're going to turn it back on and start it up. Okay, so I've just started my unit up and right out of the gate, I can already see I have an issue. You can see my gauge readings. This is R410A. My condenser fan is running, yet my suction pressure, as you can see, is falling down almost to 50 pounds per square inch. As you can see, as you cross over to R410A, saturated evaporator temperature, we are below the freezing point on my indoor coil. That's a problem. The unit just shut off. It's kicking off on a low pressure switch. The pressure switch makes again, brings the unit back on. So today we're not gonna be able to check the charge on this thing, but this is gonna be a good opportunity to demonstrate things to look for when you walk up on a unit, things that you can audibly hear and visually see as you walk up to a unit, say you're, do, if you're running a service call or maybe you're just performing your normal maintenance you do every quarter if it were the winter time and I had a fan cycle control, maybe that fan would be coming off, but my compressor and my fan are both shutting off because my low pressure switch is shutting down to protect the unit. What's going to happen with this unit if we don't catch this quickly? A couple different things can happen. Number one, obviously you're going to leak all your refrigerant. Eventually you'll have such low pressure it'll never come back on, but the adverse effect we're having right now we're banging that compressor, all you hear it starting and stopping, starting and stopping. We're washing the oil out of the crankcase of the heater. The motor in the compressor is getting hot. It's not running long enough to cool it down. So we have an issue, I already know right now, it's either a restriction or it's low on refrigerant. Now, a great visual indicator that I should have seen this right away you got to know when you're working with inferior equipment. So that, that's, a, that's a sign right there, right away. I'm probably going to have an issue with this gear. It's not a Daikin brand. You know, we, we got what we got to work with. It's already in here, so we're going to have to make it happen. Okay, so next steps we're going to do now is we're going to go shut this guy off to protect our piece of new gear. Fortunately, MRG did not install this piece of equipment, but we're going to go ahead and walk through the steps as real world scenario we either run a service call we're doing our maintenance we come up on a unit with these issues so we're going to walk you through the steps on what to do next where you go what the likely problem is so we're going to walk through the steps on where you would next check to look for a refrigerant leak on this system because the installing contractor did a good job and he made a note in there that he pulled this system down to 240 microns so if that's correct when they started it it didn't have a refrigerant leak so they either undercharged it, which is highly unlikely that it's running this way, they'd walk away with it like that. So what's happened since they started it up a couple months ago, the systems developed a leak. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps to take and the likely places to start on a split system like this. The easiest place to start and kind of working your way backwards until you find that refrigerant leak and what to do next. Okay, so now we're going to go through some steps of uh, what I'm going to look for quickly. You know, we want to do a, a quick visual type of leak search on this thing to see if it's got a, a good leak on it that we can find easily without breaking out electronic or ultrasonic leak detectors. So 
Got our handy liquid leak detector. It's like a soapy solution, but again, don't get that mixed up whether you're gonna mix some Dawn and water together. That doesn't work good. This is a pretty good product. Uh, this Cal Blue Snoop is another good brand that's out there. The difference between just mixing soap and water with this is this really adheres to the pipe or whatever you're gonna spray it on. It kind of sticks to it and stays there and creates a bubble a lot longer than just soap and water would. You know, soap and water is gonna rinse right off. So if you've got a slow leak, it's not gonna give it time to bubble up that soap and water where if you use the right liquid leak detector, it'll stay on there a little longer for you. So common leaker on some units is gonna be uh, your service ports where you would hook your gauges up to. So again, you may pull your outside panels off to look at that, but on this, since I'm down here, I can look from the inside. I'm looking around for just visual indicators of streaks going down that coil with dirt stuck to them. That's gonna be a little bit of oil leaking out. The fans pulling the dirt and stuff from the air across that coil, it's gonna stick to it and you're gonna see a dirty streak on the condenser coil. That's a good way to just, you're just doing an initial check right now. If we've got a decent sized leak, it may be as easy as doing these steps to find the leak and then you can quote that repair up or go talk to the customer about it and see what they wanna do next steps there. So I'm just gonna quickly, I would go through and I'd spray my service fittings, go ahead and spray around my valves real quick, spray them down. And then what you're looking for is to see bubbles forming on those. So, you know, anywhere I've got a fitting screwed onto a valve or a cap, might give her a spray, you know, make sure all my caps are tight, anywhere that's brazed. So when I see this unit got put in, they brazed right here. You know, go ahead and see, even though I'm not seeing any signs of leaks, go ahead and spray those guys down. Could be a slow leak. It's not really showing up any dirt from the oil, but it might bubble up. So get to what you can, all the obvious ones where they've either brazed to the existing pipe or you've got a valve or a service fitting around your dryer here. That's a factory braze, but hey, if your vibration goes on when the compressor runs, let's check all that good stuff. And shoot around everything you can there. And then the next step is we would go indoors and start looking in the indoor units. When it's in the condenser and it's a decent sized leak, a lot of times they're pretty easy to find just by looking around. You know, it's not gonna be, if it's leaking so bad, you can hear it by the time you get to it, the gas is gonna be out of it. But we still do have some refrigerant in the system, so we wouldn't have to add any nitrogen or add any refrigerant. It's actually a really good chance to do a thorough leak search when there is still refrigerant in the system. We don't have to recover gas. We don't have to contaminate it by adding nitrogen. We can just use what's in the system right now use our liquid leak detector, and then from that step, we'd move on to electronic. But let's go inside, take a look at that indoor coil and that indoor air handler, and check that out, see what we can find there. Okay, so we have made our way back to our indoor units. I've traced my line set and verified that this is the indoor unit my line set for my condensing unit is going to. So first thing I'm gonna do before I spray anything, I can see my liquid line laying up against it sectionally, so I'm gonna feel it and look. Is that wet, got oil on it? No, it's all dry, so I'll go ahead and spray these fittings right here that I can get to. Don't necessarily want to go cut insulation until I have to, because when I go cut this back, guess what? That means I've got to put it back like I found it, so I'm going to need extra tape and extra materials. So I'm going to spray these, make sure I don't see any bubbles. Nothing's popping up there. At this point, other than starting to disassemble the unit, there's not a whole lot further I can go with the spray. I've, I've done my visual checks. I don't see anything. I've sprayed to what I can get to. What I'm looking for is bubbles to form where I've sprayed around those joints, okay? Typically, if you're gonna have a leak on the piping, it's usually gonna be on a solder joint. Now, sometimes you can have a compressor that's got a bad vibration and it might be cracking the discharge pipe on the compressor. When that happens, when you get to the unit, it's gonna be out of gas. It's not, that's not gonna be a slow leak scenario. It's gonna crack and release the charge. Now, as I go to start leak searching my line set now, it's all easy here, but as you can see, this thing's 16 to 20 feet in the air. I'm probably gonna need a 10 foot ladder at least maybe even a 12 foot ladder. Once you start getting that narrow territory, you're probably gonna need a, another hand with you to help hold the ladder. If you're in an office setting, you want him around the base of the ladder so nobody's walking into your ladder, knocking your ladder over. So, you know, when you start getting that high up and doing that stuff, that's when it's time to have that conversation with the customer. Does he want you to proceed, give him your game plan, 
he might want to quote for it. He might say, yeah, just do it, but just have that conversation first before you take the initiative to start calling a second man out to the job. As I mentioned earlier, when I start with my electronic leak detector, where I like to start first is at my indoor unit, right? Installer did a nice job. They put a union in here. So I would loosen that union, disconnect it. Probably a good idea to have a bucket or something under there. You're gonna spill a little water, let that stuff drain out. And then I'm gonna take the probe on my electronic leak detector and I'm gonna stab it inside this pipe. Because if this coil in here is leaking, that residual frigate's gonna work its way down around this drain pan, and I'm probably gonna be able to pick that leak up from being inside this pipe because that's open to this area in here. So if I, if I stick it in there and it starts ringing out, I know my leak's somewhere in this coil. Now, my job's not over now. I've gotta disassemble my flue pipe. I gotta take these covers off, pull everything out. Then I'm gonna break the spray back out again, start spraying down the U-bends, looking for obvious signs of oil, trying to determine where that leak is in the coil, is it repairable? Do we need to replace the coil? So as you can see above me, as I was talking how you can have multiple line sets going together, I've got a sprinkler pipe and then I've got three refrigeration, or I've got a sprinkler pipe and then I've got three line sets. Each of them has a liquid line tied to them, but they're not labeled. I'm literally gonna have to go outside, see where it penetrates the wall, Go to the other side of the wall, make sure, I'm, make sure you're staying on the right one the whole way back when you're leak searching these line sets. Last thing you wanna do is spend two or three hours busting your butt and then come to find out the whole time you've been on the wrong line set. Okay, well we're back outside at our condenser and unfortunately using the spray solution, we weren't able to pick up the leak. Again, we can only check a few select spots using this. We can't get into the evaporator coil and check that without really disassembling some stuff. I just wanted to show you a really quicker way to just kind of do some initial checks right off the bat in case you can pick it up that way. We were unsuccessful doing that, so my next step would be to break out my electronic leak detector. I usually don't go to the ultrasonic leak detector unless I'm really having trouble finding that leak, and in which case when I use those ultrasonics, I like to pump it up with nitrogen and add quite a bit of pressure to it because we really want to get that thing leaking hard to use the ultrasonic so you can hear the leak the electronic leak detector sensing the refrigerant and picking that up and going off and ringing out to let you know. So where I usually like to start on a split system like this, I go right to the evaporator coil, pull the drain line, make sure obviously the drain pan is dry, and then I like to stab the end of my leak detector in there because if, I, if it goes off in the drain pan of the unit, you know the leak is in the evaporator coil. So that's really quick way Leak still may be in a U-band of the evaporator coil. Maybe it's not a really big leak, but if you put it in there and you start ringing out in the drain pan of the indoor unit, chances are your leak is somewhere in that evaporator coil. And then at that point, you can tear your coil, your panels off your indoor unit. And then I go back to the spray and start spraying down my U-bands on my evaporator coil until I'm picking up bubbles. And then I know, can I repair that leak? Do I need to change the coil? And so on. If I don't pick it up on the indoor coil, I'm going to come right back out here next and I'm going to run that electronic leak detector across everything we just went across with this uh, liquid leak detector. Like we showed in the footage as we go inside our office, our line set is probably 25 or 35 foot in the air. So it's the hardest thing to get to, right? So a lot of common sense comes into play. Let's pick the things we can get to first. Let's rule those out first before we go break our neck trying to climb up in the ceiling looking around chasing pipe down. At our office here, this, this one side of our office, I've got three condensers almost identical, all feeding into the same mechanical closet. So it can be a challenge sometimes making sure you're on the right line set and you're on the right air handler. So always make sure you're working on the right indoor unit that goes with your outdoor. And that sounds simple, but sometimes that, that's not as easy as it sounds. Worst case, go turn the thermostat on and off and see which condenser's coming on and what indoor unit's shutting off. That'll help you identify these aren't always labeled. And when they are labeled, they're not always labeled correctly. So you can chase your tail sometimes. So just make sure the condenser you're working on and you know that indoor unit goes with this condenser. And then when you're tracing your line set out, you get above ceiling sometimes. Those of you guys been doing this a while, you know what I'm talking about. You'll have three or four different line sets all together. So take your time when you get to chasing line sets. But again, start on your indoor unit. If you can't pick it up with the liquid, 
start on your indoor unit with your electronic, rule that out first, come out here to your condenser, start looking around your condenser. And if you're not finding it then, then you're going to your line set. As you can see, this line set's insulated. I like to pick up the insulation and stick my electronic leak detector in there. That'll help me find the leak sometimes. One thing to be cautious with that, some electronic leak detectors will ring out for insulation glue. The glue they use on that Armaflex insulation to put it together has a property in it that will make some electronic leak detectors ring out. So if you're picking it up, when you stab it under the insulation, just, you know, don't get too excited at first. Just make sure you're not getting a false reading from that. But uh, those are the basic steps. When you walk up on one, again, the piece of gear is going to tell you right away if you might be in trouble just by walking up to it. And uh, from those steps, start with the basics. Don't go overboard at first. Start with the basics and work your way up from there and uh, you'll get it eventually. Some of these can be really tough. Don't get discouraged, but you'll get there. That's what we got today for you. If you guys had any more ideas you'd like us to cover, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and drop us a hint there and we'll make sure we get that out there to you.